Right, uh, Full Time Devils podcast. What number are we on? 24. 24. We're more than that, aren't we? No, we had the the the, the one. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, we no, no, we don't mention that. Started talking yeah, about title that twenty one. <laughs> yeah, podcast twenty four. Uh, my name's Gaz. That's Carl from the That United Family YouTube yeah. channel. Peaky from Peaky Pundit, and of course Jay Motty from Full Time Devils. Uh, guys, where should we start today? Should we start and just get everything off our chest from the weekend's game? Yeah, I reckon. Just so we're not fucking moaning all podcast. <laughs> Jay, talk to me. Uh, very good away point at our mid-table <laughs> rivals. <laughs> no. If we're going to stay out of the relegation zone, these are the points that are going to get us to that, yeah, that golden 40, uh, 42 point mark. Right, mate. Then. Right, no, genuinely, right, we were all in air and we're saying like on paper we're probably a top six club. Yeah. Just about. Right. It's, and we're saying possibly top four is the best case that we can get this season. Yeah. That's what best we can hope for. A team that loses to Crystal Palace and the way we played in that Southampton game when they were down to 10 men, I can't see that team getting top four. Shite, wasn't it? Yeah. One, well, you, one, what, we watched it together, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, it was loads what, of fun. What was you <laughs> <laughs> It's loads of fun. The best bit was the free McDonald's, <laughs> oh, honestly. What, nuggets and that. Um, them spicy nuggets, something else. Um, All the fast food chains are available. Yes, oh, must yeah. mention that. Why yeah. do I need to mention that? I'm not on the BB fucking scene now. <laughs> um, do you remember when I said Nick should start bleeping me on videos? What a job that would be. Uh, yeah, what were we saying? Some of the negatives from that game. Marcus Rashford. Lindelof. Lindelof. Can't add a ball anymore, apparently. Yeah. Um, Pereira can't be dodging the l- bullet here. Pereira. <laughs> yeah, Andreas mm. Pereira's not very good. <coughs> you asked me a question, didn't you, about like what does he do? Well, And after that game, I can't, I, I've, I've, I've got no answer. I was going to ask you guys now, Andreas Pereira, what does he do? What's he meant to do? He got away with it, didn't he, at the Chelsea game, I felt, for his assist. Because he was dreadful, apart from he did the assist for... Um, Marshall, 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 Marshall yeah. Still, yeah, which papered over the cracks. He, I think he was already his number was already up, and he came off shortly after it. Um, tell you what he does. He does what Jordi Cruyff used to do. He does what Obertan used to do. He plays well in pre-season, and then goes missing during the season and doesn't really do a lot. If I'm being honest, I mean, he's one of those players. What, you can almost count on one hand the amount of good games he's had that haven't been in pre-season. What's he meant to do though? Because like United fans have been saying for ages, he should be in the team when we've been struggling. I think I don't know. People maybe see him as maybe being that technical kind of player who's going to link that midfield from attack. That's the only thing I could think or can see why United players might think you know he might inject a bit of that into the team. But he's clearly not been there bringing. Like Jay said, he's sort of pre-season. It's all good and well, but when it comes to uh, business time. Um, of the season and in games when it matters obviously we've not been seeing him and uh, I was surprised at Oli's kind of team selection I felt the team he picked for the Southampton game should have been his team for the Palace game the week before you know Matter sitting in there trying to break teams down when you know teams are going to drop off um, I thought you would have played Jesse from the start or maybe even Mason from the start uh, Gomez wasn't kind of included again in the squad which I think maybe is frustrating fans a little bit we want to see him given a chance because I thought from away from home we might have played that more attacking counter counter attacking style of play should I say yeah. um, whereas I think Matt kind of you know he didn't he, he didn't have a bad game he didn't have a good game um, which didn't I thought he was alright for the first half yeah, being honest, being honest yeah, I, thought yeah. he, I thought he I mean now this doesn't mean anything when you say one of our better players it's just almost irrelevant <laughs> but I felt uh, like best looking woman in Liverpool yeah or, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think sorry, he, Colleen. He um, he did. I thought he did well in the first half. I thought he faded as you probably expect him to. Um, but yeah, I, I was a bit surprised. At, I've been a bit surprised at most of the team selection other than the Chelsea game. To be honest with you, I, I think he's he's always. I think he still looks like he's a little bit unsure as to whether to really go for it, whether to do counter attacking, and sometimes we seem to be caught in the middle. And I don't like Paul Pogba playing deep. I don't, don't, I don't get why he keeps doing it. What, what, Jay, just quickly on that, because when Oli first came in, obviously, for me, the best form I've seen Pogba play under United is then first three or four games when he had him in that yeah. advanced 10 role. Mm. Bit of a free role, bit of a luxury mm. player, if you like. Um, I don't know why he's playing him in that sitting two with McTominay. I, I think you can only play him up top, like there, in that yeah. 10 yeah. role. That's the only position you can play him. If he's, if he's going to be like he is on the ball, which... You kind of can accept with a number 10, losing the ball a bit, yep. trying too many fancy things. You can't be doing that outside your yeah, own you box. You can't though. be doing it 10, 20 yards outside his, his box. You know no. What I mean? and it's, but that's in trouble a few times already. I, I, but that's just a common sense thing to me. Is for me, but that's some audience? of the things that we slated Matic for as well, where he kind of, um, when he's playing in that deeper role, sometimes he kind of would take an extra touch, land himself in trouble, or go down blind alleys, get caught in possession in that in our kind of third, and it would... You know, your backs are against it then. And like you said, we've seen that with Pogba. Um, but is now an opportunity for Oli to try and push him higher up the pitch with Martial being out. 
Is it affecting Rashford's game not having a proper number 10 in there? Or if it was Martial playing there, not having a proper number 10 in there who technically can link the play up if it was a Fernandez coming in, in pre, uh, you know, during the transfer window. Is that his medical yet, Fernandez? <laughs> <laughs> He's going Is that through, about apparently. 10? Yeah. He's going to be 10. off to Madrid as well, <laughs> isn't he? I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm massively frustrated with the situation around Marcus Rashford. Not Marcus Rashford himself at the minute, but I just think he's being managed poorly from all, all mm. angles. I don't think we should be going into this. We shouldn't have been going into the season relying on him as our only striker and the backup striker being a 17-year-old lad. That's but, asking too much to Marcus but, Rashford. But that's what everyone asks for. You're going to ruin him. But that's what everyone asks for. And, then, and these same people ask for that everyone to be like shipped out are now complaining that we got no one then. It's nah, like, I don't know, man. It's like, it's like Lukaku... If 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 he wanted to start every week, then I agree shipping him out is the best bet. But I I would have only been happy with Lukaku going if there was some sort of a replacement. Oh yeah, yeah well, exactly. Yeah, but that's what, not, what we've not done, is it? We've not replaced. The, the other thing, guys, I reckon. Do we have to question? Is look, Oli uh, sort of set his cards out. Whether he went wanted a striker and he didn't come in, or whatever. He's got to deal with what he's got now up till January. Mason Greenwood, a lot of faith is going to be going in him, and I think it will throughout the season. But when Southampton went down to 10 men with 20 minutes to go, surely that was a time for Ollie to chuck him on and say, make a bit of a statement to Southampton as well, to say, you know what, we're going to come and have a go now, to automatically put them on the back foot, psychologically thinking, right, they're chucking on a young lad here, attacking threat, we're going to be kind of up against it. But he, again, took too long to make them decisions and put him on with sort of five, six minutes to go, or whatever it was. Mm. Um, does Oli need to show a bit more faith in him and just and just chuck him on and back him back him up a bit? Don't think Oli's subs um, have been particularly clever this season so far. I know it's only four games mm. in, but Chelsea game aside, where we, we were coasting, weren't we? By the time he started making changes, Wolves, what was it? Green would get f- five, five minutes, minutes, five minutes. Um, and then he made was it Matt? I got nine minutes or whatever, mm. ten minutes or whatever. Um, Palace didn't really affect the change in a positive way. Greenwood looks. I don't know. He just I don't, he just struggled in that game against Palace. I think he wasn't using the right way. And then obviously you just mentioned Southampton. You know, as soon as he went that cement, do you react straight away? Do something straight away? And he didn't. He waited. Um, I don't know. He just does. He's he's just he hasn't got it right tactically in making the changes because the only time we've won the game is when we've been coasting. We haven't been able to. To, to crack it and that, that is a bit of a concern and in that Southampton game he brought um, when he brought Matic on and he pushed Pogba up a touch up the pitch and then he put Lingard in the same kind of area of the pitch so they kind of clashing and they were kind of getting in each other's space as opposed to kind of leaving that it made, that made to be fair that Matic sub made sense to me yeah people were slagging it off weren't they on the, you, were doing yeah. a lot, you guys were doing watch along it was confused and the people me at the on time, the comments were going Matic we're, we're chasing the game you bring on Matic but I get that because you're just pushing Paul Pogba up yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. the only reason you bring in Manu Matic on and it made sense but then again like you say him and Lingard who's you know there seems to be a bit of a, a, a they weren't really working together well and it was a bit, like, like, a bit of a mess didn't they? Yeah. yeah and you know and Look, Greenwood we, had a shot that was was a, a decent shot, but you'd expect the keeper to save. But did we really look like scoring? Genuinely, um, no, no. no. He had made, a shot from thirty yards out with about four players in front of him. Playing against he's been, 10 reading, he's been reading the negativity of that. Do you know what? All right, cause obviously Greenwood's <laughs> in about twenty five yeah, yeah, yeah. acres of space on the right hand side, and he's shot. He's obviously been reading like tweets and stuff. And going, oh, I'm scoring a goal oh, here, me. You know, get these, get these off. The last thing I've got to do is read tweets. You know. We're like, we're seven, we're seven minutes into this podcast and no one's cried yet, so I'm not sure there's oh. any point. We're not going to get any views at this hey, rate. If everyone Pinky's knows. Not, Pinky's not got warmed up yet. Yeah. Yeah. Tears, hey. tears equals hey. views. Hey. Knowing that, that them trainers look familiar. <laughs> 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 what you want about? Mate, I don't listen. know what you're talking hey. about. Listen. <laughs> Uh, right, so if you didn't see, we'll talk about it. It's no <laughs> laughing matter, I suppose, apparently. Um, we drew one all against Southampton after the game peak. You were chatting to fans um, and you chatted to one fan in particular called Mickey, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I did indeed. So Mickey is, um, I found this out, by the way, after the game. When I approached him, I saw him in the stadium. He was right at the front um, of the away section, singing away and whatever else. Um, had a Newton Heath jacket on. After the game, I spotted him. I thought, you know, get him on. Can we always do a bit, obviously, with the full-time he's, he's doubles? He's been on full-time like, doubles, hasn't he, Mickey? I think I'm, I'm sure Marcus said he's had him on before. Been on before. Yeah. Um, so anyway, spoke to the gentleman, and you know he actually gave quite a good kind of analysis of the game, and you can tell he was obviously quite passionate about football, um, understood the game quite well, 
and then obviously I'm sure everyone's seen it, so there's no need for me to kind of go into it on yeah, that we, sense. Yeah, but we, we, we've seen you trying to milk the tears out of it. <laughs> no, well, basically, oh, you know what? <laughs> I don't know how to no, react. I know. I know. Hands up, and I, su- I saw him, and he and he kind of you know went into uh, the stage he did. But I just felt the right thing to do, rather than try and shut someone down, let him be. I agree. You know, I, I felt let him be. Um, look, it's, at the end of the day, all these pla- we're all on these platforms to voice our opinions as fans, and they're open to everyone. So I thought let him be, and. Uh, and it, and it kind of that's very nice of you Pinky, nice. but the, well, the video I saw you weren't letting him be you were like come on son come on <laughs> let it out go on it must be really painful go on I didn't know I was just like and I'm sure there was a bit where you started pinching him as he was <laughs> as he was uh, oh, right. uh, <laughs> in all honesty right it, you can get a bit emotional at the football can't you when your emotions are up and down and stuff yeah. like that yeah. and especially listen, you know, listen, yeah, in a game where there's know, been a red card and the situation United are in at the minute uh, you know if he, if he gets upset at the football it, you know it's fair enough to me watching it it was a little bit like you know getting upset after a one or draw against Southampton really it's not is it you know is there is there really any points that is that a little bit pathetic but I wasn't I I, I didn't hate the guy no. or slag him off so we we, we made a little bit of a joke <laughs> Gas doing his usual disclaimer for yeah. twat man <laughs> honestly right this, I was just saying he's got this podcast we, we always right, film this we, have him on this, we, we record this podcast the day after twat man and it's just becoming an opportu- opportunity for me <laughs> to, to apologise <laughs> if you don't know what twat man is I'm sorry guys it's this week at Man United that Gas uh, Nick, and maybe <laughs> Nate, <laughs> between them <laughs> in a bunker somewhere more Nick uh, <laughs> Basically, I had a laugh at this fella uh, who got a bit emotional and people didn't like it. So if that fella did watch it and it made him upset, I apologise to you. But all the people commenting who don't have a sense of humour, I'm not apologising to you. You need to fucking grow up. That, well, that, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great apology. That's a great well done, mate. Yeah. You've done well there. I'll go in away from it because obviously, look, it, I never expected it to kind of go out the way it did. And, you know, it's been retweeted and whatever else. So I made a, made a point of actually uh, tracking Mickey down. So I actually got hold of his phone number through somebody who I saw tweeted who knew him because um, he's involved with the Man United Supporters Club at Southampton and he's arranged coaches for away fans for, for many, many years. So I thought, you know, um, I had a responsibility to kind of get in contact with him and I did. Um, and, mate, is if anyone thinks he's kind of, um, you know, in this dis- depressed mode, you're, you're absolutely wrong. The guy's full of energy, full of life, really positive. Um, and, you know, he, he, he took it with a pinch of salt. He never expected it to go the way he did. He's a football fan at the end of the day and he was letting his emotions out. Well, this is what I felt. I felt a bit frustrating. It felt like people were almost insinuating that, that, that you and maybe me in some respects were almost taking advantage of him. And I'm just like, just because he's an older fella, he's not senile, you know. He's got his own brain. He can make his own decisions. He's been alive a lot longer than some of us. You know, if he doesn't like the video, he can say... Get that down, or I don't want to be is, in this. This video. is why I called him because I thought if look if he wanted it to come offline, he might not have access to social media. So I thought, let me fill him in on what's happened with it, and um, he was more than happy for it too. And don't be surprised if you don't see him back on a fan cam anytime. Well, what, sh- what, yeah, what was the thing? I don't want to go on and on about this, but just quickly, because he, he was talking about Alan Bissaka money and he got a yeah. Was he was just like he's just upset with the way things have gone. Uh, you know what? That's the bigger picture. A lot of people are saying, "Why is he crying over two points dropped?" Um, and, and all the rest of it. But I think it was speaking to him off camera after, just to see if he was okay before he left to go home. Um, it was the bigger picture. I think. I think. Look, we know. I, I come out and obviously the, the the title of the video said he was a lifelong fan, and people said, "Well, how lifelong is he? If he's sure he'd gone through the seventies era and all that." But I think it was obviously the the success that we've had under Sir Alex Ferguson for twenty six years and and whatever else. He's kind of coming out of that now, and he's probably thinking. You know, it, it, are we going to get back to that stage? You know, we've had it so good for so long. Um, so I think it was more of that that got to him. You know, I think he is from Southampton, so it probably hurt him to see us yeah. drop two points at his hometown. Oh, yeah. Do you know what? As well, it's, it's sort of on the back of that. And you'll uh, probably appreciate this, Carl. You know, I've I've been lucky enough. I was 13 when we won the title. I first saw us won the title. So I just started. I just stopped going with my dad and started going with my mates. And for the next 20 odd years, we won everything. I watched us win Champions League titles, trip, you know, hat trick of titles. I saw Ronaldo, I saw Rooney, I saw Keane. I just saw football and trophies and players that I could never imagine. And what what I worry about is I, you know, see my lad who's four or my, my eldest who's she's um, eight, and I think are they gonna have to go through? My dad, my dad went twenty six years without seeing us win a title. Do you know what I mean? And we get are we in this 
for the long haul rebuilding yeah. process <laughs> because it happens look at the Scousers they they never felt in the 1990 they would go 30 years and counting yeah. without winning a title and that's what worry I think is my lad going to be like go 30 years true, old yeah. before he season United winning a title no, I, mean, I, was, I was born in 91 look so yeah. I was born into like you say the I was 89, and winning and, yeah. and, and, and all that and then like you say my kids all support United now and it's like Oh, they're going to watch all the negatives before. Like, I, we watch it, we'll sit there and watch a game. And Chloe's like, oh, no, fucking, what is it, fucking? Because she's 11. But she said, we're, <laughs> we're, oh, we're rubbish and we're this. And I said, we're, we're not. We are now, but we're not because, you know, of, of all the history and that. Oh, yeah, the way so. you use that talking, you're making me actually well up a little bit now. I'm starting <laughs> to cry like Mickey. But uh, no, uh, no, all honesty, like, I, I wouldn't cry myself. But Can we not just play, talk Mickey, about no. something and a little people, bit more just, cheery just, now? Just the people, the, those people who are commenting on that video all offended. You would not survive secondary school in Manchester. <laughs> Seriously, you just would not. Uh, right, let's move on uh, and let's talk about someone who, I mean, I was about to say he silenced a lot of haters, but they're not haters. They're worse than that. They're, or you can call them as racists. Uh, the <coughs> Lukaku situation mm. in yeah. Italy, where he stepped up to take a penalty against Cagliari, and you're hearing monkey chants from behind the goal, and it's just like... Whoa. Madness, isn't it? Wait, it's, like, it's, it's, it's madness. It's like 2019, isn't it? Like, it's still happening. It's, it's just... almost like... I remember like when I was a kid, like someone had to explain to me like why they're chanting that. And even when I was a kid, I was like, what? What? If anything, these like making the chants... They're knuckle dragging eight people. Yeah. It's like the, that's the irony of the whole thing. Oh, go on, no, no, go on. Go I was on good luck on the drive up here. On um, they had a bit of a phone in with uh, kick it out. Uh, Troy Townsend was on there and whatever else, and saying the things that need to be done. I'm not sure what else they you know can do. How much more awareness can they raise? Yes, it's got to you know they've got to keep doing it, and players have got to keep coming out um, and and speaking positively about it. But how long can it go on before a ho- high profile player? Picks a ball up and walks off and says, "Mate, enough's enough. Like, I'm I'm paid to be a footballer. It's my job. It's my profession. Mate, if you go and work wherever else you go, you don't. It doesn't come with that kind of flack, you know. It's but it's got to get to a point where, you know, a player is surely going to have to do that. You know? It's not even. Do you know what? As well, sorry, it's, it's, sorry it's not even the responsibility of you know Lukaku no. or Moise Keane. Didn't he have it? Yeah. Off fans as well or black players. It should be a team thing. If, my, yeah. if I'm on a yeah. team, my yeah. teammates getting abused. Yeah, I'm not letting waiting in people. But you know what? Fuck your game. I'll take take myself off. If I was, you know, if it was just on that team. So yeah, I get it. But the problem is then it'll be like, oh, Every we've time. seen it. You know, with like the comments that black players <coughs> getting it is, and it's like if you do that, oh, they've got an attitude problem. Oh, or you're letting them win and all this sort of stuff. But I think it's, it's, it's an authority thing as well. The authorities need to just act and say, right, you're behind closed doors for the next ten games. It's happening. Carry on, carry on doing your chance, and this is what we're going to do to you. I, because we've had it in the past where UEFA, in inverted commas, have punished. Sorry, have punished people in inverted commas like George should be honest, I'm getting it wrong. <laughs> um, have punished them by like closing down a segment of the ground for you know yeah. a Europa yeah. League mm. game or whatever, which is just like pathetic. But if you actually say right behind closed doors for the next two games or three games, or whatever, or give them a punishment that really hurts them, they'll pack it in, or they'll at least you know be forced to try and do some of the club will be forced to act because at the minute I don't know what's going on it wouldn't seem like anything's getting done towards it I genuinely find these people who do who do these things go to football games racially abused play I find the way that their minds work fascinating because um, it's it's so bizarre so they do the racist chanting before he takes the penalty then after he scores the penalty they carry on doing the racist chanting so it's like before they were doing it they were trying to put him off by saying you know you're you're inferior to me yeah. because you're black. And then after he scores the goal, they're saying, <coughs> oh, but it doesn't matter because I'm white. And so it's like they're trying mm. to make themselves feel better, better, better about yeah. the fact that he scored the penalty. And it's such a weird psychological thing that that, that I think is going to take in certain countries where it's prominent like that and it's accepted to, and you can do that in public scenarios. It's going to take generations to get rid of it. And I think there's nothing that UEFA kick it out or anyone can do to get rid of it out of the sport. But I agree with what you say, Jay. You've just got to ban them from the ground. I think, that's yeah, it. I yeah. think, you know, if you do that over here, you get a ban, don't you? Mate, you wouldn't... Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's the <coughs> mind-boggling thing. Can you imagine a way end over here doing that? It would be the most un... It would be the most disgusting thing There was thing an issue, ever. wasn't there? Just something where there was in the cup, the Millwall, a segment of the Millwall fans do something like similar and don't get me wrong we have seen it in this yeah, country yeah, and we have but, and we, but usually there was action though I might be wrong usually sure it is someone will comment it is individuals that yeah I was going to say like England. here in England I think there will be more of a kind of United stand against it whichever yeah. club it is the majority of that fan base actually saying well hold on a minute mate that's a bit 
that's a bit out of order. Abuse is one thing, but racial abuse is a bit. And I think that's what I like to think, you know, here in England as a country and whatever else, the fan base would stick together at times like that, mm. you know, and whether it's one of the national players getting it on international duty or it's, you know, a club club uh, sort of player getting it. I think, you know, we do get it here. It's just that minority and people say, are they real football fans? Are they, are they not? It's just depressing. How many times are we talk about this? Over this and podcast? over again. I feel like I'm repeating myself. We it's seem to weird, talk about it every week. But then, you know, if we didn't, people say, why are you not mentioning that? Because it goes on every week. Yeah. Every week there's something else we yeah. keep talking about because it, it keeps happening. And it's depressing to me to have to keep bringing it up. But, you know, we react to what goes on in football, not just at United. Mm. Um, I know there's United Connection, obviously, because Lukaku just left United. But we do react to what goes on in Unfortunately, this is where we're at in a minute. And it's it seems to be getting sad. worse, though, doesn't it? At the minute, That's the last the couple of weeks, like you know, obviously from like missing penalties to obviously the Lukaku thing, I just don't understand why why it's all all of a, all of a sudden just it, flares up. They're again. flaring up again, yeah, yeah. Like you know, like you say, kick it out and and you're ready for another banning. But I know a couple of years back, they, they, they need they need someone like Graham Sunes to go over there and educate them. <sighs> <laughs> Jesus, right. Well, that, 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 well, since we since it's a segue, we've got to talk about him now, haven't we? Graham Sunes is just an horrible, sly old man, I think. Because if someone's not explained to him what's going on, then then you, I suppose you can say it's ignorance and he doesn't realise it. But there's no way someone's not sat him down and gone, hang on a minute. But you'd like to you'll, think... How come you love Harry Maguire for signing for United? You don't like Moise Keane? You know what I mean? Oh, that was it. I was just thinking, who was he slagging and, off? And the Moise, Moise Keane, Keane thing, it, yeah. right? This is the, yeah. I said this on Twilight, but the Moise Keane thing, the only thing I've seen of him from off the pitch is that clip where he signs for Everton and he's got his mum Mom, with him yeah. Yeah. and his mum gets his shirt and everything and it's the it's a lovely, lovely moment. moment yeah. I've never seen anything from him from off the pitch other than that. But got again, a, yeah, go, no, go, go, go say, for he's it. He's obviously got a bad attitude, hasn't he? That's what he's, he's got, got a bad attitude. Nice, yeah. I love that the bit that made me laugh with this Graham Sunes was he completely baseless, got no clue what he's talking about, just Moise Keane, yeah, he's got a bad attitude. I've just, you know, just invented that <laughs> yeah. with no evidence to support it whatsoever. No. And no. then ties it to Adebayo, a 25-year-old yeah. who left um, Arsenal to go to City, yeah. which is absolutely no connection. <laughs> they're they're black. Yeah. Oh, he's just like Adebayo. <laughs> again, they were, they were talking about this again today yeah. and thinking, surely someone at Sky has got to go and sit him down. He's probably and, a bit more intelligent <laughs> than him upstairs and say, hold on a minute, you can't... What is the connection you're trying to make here? Um, but yeah, bizarre again. Yeah, because just... he's gone on about Adebayo when he's been, been in his prime, but like, obviously Moise Keane's like a young lad. It's like, yeah, yeah. there's no connection there, mate. Right? It's, it's, uh, I mean, the whole racial element obviously is disgusting, but another thing that annoys me as well about this whole thing, it's just typical shit punditry of not having done any research, not knowing anything about what you're talking about. You don't know what Mo- Moise Keane, you don't know why he's left Juventus, you don't know the fact that Juventus <laughs> have got this massive wage bill, they've got all these players, they've got the likes of Ronaldo, Dybali, they were trying to get rid of to everyone and no one wanted. They've got these players and it's like Moise Keane obviously knows he's going to get a lot of games at Everton, made a move, a 19-year-old who's got a lot to offer. He'd also had abuse in Italy, I don't know if that played a factor in him wanting to get out of there, I don't know. He was in the last year of his contract. It's just basic things you can look at and think, oh, maybe all these factors are why he's ended up at Goodison Park, not just... Oh no, he's got a bad attitude, and he's like out of bio. These pun- what? these what are you even on about? Need to be responsible, I think, for 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 not knowing things. And it's better- <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, because mate, it's one they 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 should know what they're talking about. They're fucking pundits. They're not us. They're not us gobshites. So you literally yeah, just, yeah, we're just fans. It. Yeah, we're just we're just fans in the pub saying whatever we want. Yeah. But these pundits, that's their job, isn't it? It's, it's like, literally yeah. their job. And it, the sad thing is, someone like you know. Danny Higginbottom, for example, or Alex Scott, or example, some example. You can tell people have done a bit of their own work. They yeah. know what they're talking about. Totally. Yeah. Not necessarily from their experience on the pitch. You know, no. Danny Higginbottom wasn't as good as, as someone like Roy Keane or anyone on that level. But you can tell that Danny Higginbottom, he's done his research. So when he's commentating on a game, it doesn't matter if it's United or if it's a lower league team. <laughs> he knows the players. He knows the, bit, the history of, of those players. He knows the tactics and the yeah. system they're playing. So he can talk about it. Even Jose, the other day, everyone was slagging him off for his <sighs> comments about Arsenal. But I actually felt... Right, that he made sense in what he was saying, and it was like tactical analysis. It wasn't just like a zep. Don't like the way he moves about. It looks like he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder. If you ask me, well, I'm, Obama Yang is a bit flash, isn't it? It was actually like yeah. Pepe, Obama Yang, like a zep. This is how they can play together. This is how I'm gonna, you know, you could work with Genduzi or whatever. It made sense whether you agree with it or not. I'm not an Arsenal fan. I'm sure some people will be able to tell us, but it made sense and it was tactical in his analysis. And I thought I actually felt that what he was saying made a bit of sense. 
So something like that you can listen to, but when it's just bluster and nonsense and stereotypical garbage, mm. you expect a bit better. You're paying a fee for this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You pay money to watch yeah. this It's funny you rubbish. mentioned that, though. Like when, he, when he was talking, Jose, and you could see all the rest of the pundits just, just kind like, of looking like... Just looking at <laughs> going, oh, my God, and you know what you're you on about? Like and, then, and, and, and they were like, just absolutely clued us, like, oh, yeah, yeah, It's yeah. like a caveman inventing fire. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's... Whoa, <laughs> whoa, it's <laughs> witchcraft. Tactics, <laughs> what? It'll be like us getting Fergie on this podcast. It would just be that. <laughs> be like, it'll be the maddest thing ever. Uh, right, another thing I want to talk about today. Uh, I woke up to some football beef, and it's quite tasty. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yes. Inject this into my veins, as <laughs> kids say. So I never knew that Michael Owen and Alan Shearer had this big rivalry. Was it was it well known until today? No, they didn't have. There wasn't a rivalry. Michael Owen was at the club when he went. Shearer was manager. Yeah. And they got relegated. So I don't know if that's caused a bit of like Shearer has a bit of a chip on his shoulder towards Owen. But I think it's more of what Owen said in his book, Annex is this. Well, yeah, well, Michael Owen's come out of his boy, and book, and he's uh, this is a direct quote from his book. I don't need to justify myself to fucking Newcastle fans. <laughs> uh, Michael Owen opened up on his magpie spell and why he still regrets that transfer. So he only did he only spend a year at Madrid? He only spent yeah. a year at Madrid. He was, and then he went to Newcastle. He went from New- but he went to Madrid, didn't he? But he did all right in Madrid. But he wasn't very popular. He was no. Capello rated him, I think, yeah. and picked him. But the fans didn't like him because Raúl got dropped. If memory serves, well, ba- yeah. basically the story is he wanted to go back to Liverpool, and they couldn't sort that out, so they sent him to Newcastle. Well, and- Liverpool had first refusals on him, yeah, yeah, um, and he's hated. He's, he apparently he hated uh, every single moment. <laughs> <laughs> did it come out when when he came out and said something didn't he Owen about obviously having to um, play for Newcastle he didn't quite enjoy it and Shearer obviously then come out and said about well, he didn't sort of complain picking up 120 grand a week or whatever yeah. it was that's exactly what's going on did yeah. you see what Owen did... said back to Shearer well, yeah. well I'll, tell, I'll, I'll tell you now Alan Shearer quoted uh, quoted that original tweet and put yes Michael we thought that also while on 120k a week Let's see if I play, see if I can play this down the mic this is Michael Owen so all I did at the end of my career for six seven years I hated it I, I couldn't wait to retire for most of my you know the... <laughs> that's Michael Owen six seven years on 120 grand saying that well, no, couldn't I, part wait to six seven years when he was at us wasn't it he yeah was about the end yeah. of his career yeah, well, it's the only time he ever won anything. Well, to be honest, he probably it? did well, want to retire well, while he was with us because we just fucking hated him, didn't we? Well, I don't know. <laughs> that City game. Yeah, he, did, he did win the title. With us. <laughs> you know, we give him a title in his medal for uh, cameos, so he did all right. We liked him for six minutes. Yeah, 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 is, yeah is a, true. It's a fun fact. It's like most relationships. I've been in that. Um, yeah, Michael Owen sitting here talking. Carry on, guys. It's fine. It's fine. As a bit of a fun fact about Michael Owen, yeah, that you might not know. I was on the tour the other day with the kids, right, and. You know the big boxes, the the big massive executive boxes that holds like twenty four people. Yeah. He has one. He owns one at Old Trafford. Still, still, oh. on a on a three year contract, mm. hundred hundred thirty grand a year. I think it is. Jesus, yeah. wonder who gets it. Know, you, might, you might invite Shearer down for the uh, Leicester game. <laughs> the thing is, yeah. think it cracks me up about Michael. No, I hate United. I hate United. Played for us. Bought a box. Loves it. So I, I, lo- I know I there's it. a big sort of glazes out thing and and all the rest of it, but the only reason I cancelled their TV was when they stopped showing Michael Owen stables. That was <laughs> the highlight of fucking television. That. So um, I played you that clip there of Michael Owen. Alan Shearer had a go at him, said, uh, yeah, Michael, we thought that also well on 120K a week. Then Michael Owen's quoted that saying, not sure you are as loyal to Newcastle as you make out, mate. Passive aggressive. I distinctly remember you being inches away from signing for Liverpool after Sir Bobby Robson put you on the bench. You tried everything to get out. Which is a stupid response because I don't think there's a single one club footballer that hasn't tried to leave the club at some point. I mean, maybe book, book, book sales, Skulls, guys. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> Gigs, uh, I don't think he, he could have gone to Italy many yeah, times for bigger okay. money than he was on at United. United, yeah. I don't think, yeah. Uh, I mean, there was a few at United, though, that we consider club legend. Like, we, let's not forget Rio Ferdinand. Mm. He wanted to go Chelsea. Wayne Rooney, mm. he wanted to go at one point. That was uh, mad, that and really then Steven Gerrard, as well, Liverpool legend. He yeah. wanted to go to Chelsea at one point as yeah. well. So I don't feel like it's much of a response, that, really. It's just is what it is. The modern day. It's a bit it's... like it's proper to beige bastards yeah. <laughs> like, eating each other with wet fish in it. Yeah, yeah. It's so like watching you know two absolute fucking waitrose shoppers having a row over an avocado. <laughs> it's Fuck probably because people didn't think on. Michael Owen had it in him to you know fucking I mean? come out like, with something oh, like that. To be honest, a serious lack like of personality. In that argument, you know? <laughs> oh, it is, oh isn't you it? wanted to leave? Oh, oh, you're on 120k a week. Not <laughs> there, did you? Oh, you Michael Owen reminds me of James Milner. 
Yeah, he yeah, starts yeah, 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 that remit of boringness. <laughs> yeah, one yeah. tone. Nobody refuses to celebrate United's winner at PSG because he thinks Liverpool fans are going to still like him. Oh like, yeah, sat on his thing like, no, you can't appreciate a last minute winner mm. in a fucking, you know, when we were three uh, two nil down. Just get a grip, mate. Is seriously, there's the teams that Michael Owen played for, right? So Newcastle, Real Madrid, Liverpool, United, Stoke. Stoke, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Did he finish Stoke, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. Do any of them like him? No. <laughs> Do you think he's the most liked at Real Madrid? I imagine. I would, Probably no, I reckon, yeah, yeah, he does, yeah, yeah. He does, he does bits, doesn't he, for um, Liverpool in the Far East. I think the Far East Liverpool fans still, still respect him. him, but anyone close to the actual uh, ground hates him because yeah. he played for United. Well, it's yeah. interesting. This happened because um, I remember like... The, 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 we did a Squawker video once and, and they remember everyone, all the local Liverpool fans, like, absolutely hate Michael Owen. The tourists, the, the tourists love him to death. Yeah, that's but the it. Local I, think that's, hate him. I think that's what he does for the club. He does stuff where they keep him away from Anfield <laughs> and put him <laughs> in, like, <laughs> Singapore or somewhere <laughs> where they're happy for him to sign their shirts <laughs> and they don't spit on him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it is a bit... Uh, he's, he's busy <laughs> flogging helicopters or whatever it is he does, <laughs> isn't he? In Dubai. And I imagine Stoke wouldn't really pay well for an ambassador to to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Um, right, what else are we talking about today? Cantona. Eric. Cantona the at the Eric. award ceremony. So this is this is another one of those things where they're making Eric Cantona out to be mental and <laughs> crazy when I actually think he makes a bit bit of sense. He does make a bit of sense. Oh, but you, to look at, he looks mental. Do you know <laughs> I mean? so it, doesn't, it doesn't help his cause. Like, he wears proper normal clothes, has a proper out-of-control beard. But like he borrowed one of my peaky hats as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, don't want to peek his hats. And then it, you know, oh, you've got a razor blade in it as well. Like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's never seen Peek without his hat on, it's well weird. He's bald. <laughs> <laughs> don't let the secrets out, guys. <laughs> you wear these ginger. Right? <laughs> um, exactly. So right. <laughs> What shampoo do you use, Jay? Um, <laughs> I just realised so, that. Full of, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> mate. Follically challenged. Not bold. I didn't choose to be bald. I shaved my head. Didn't realise like what I said. What it's you know what I said yesterday in the office? God, is there any time you don't say anything? Oh, mate. <laughs> oh, yesterday I said something. Have, but I nightmare. really put my foot in the, my mouth. in the. Oh, mate. Go on. Um, we were talking about the national anthem. Someone was saying, if you were a footballer, which is, I'd start crying when we sing the national anthem. And I said, oh, I probably wouldn't sing it. I was like, why? And I was like, I'd only sing it if they bring back the full one. And they were like, what? And I was like, they need to put back that verse in about killing Scottish people. <laughs> Not because I want to kill Scottish people. My point was, <laughs> what? why is that still our national anthem when there's a verse about fucking killing Scottish people in it? Sat next to the journalist who turned around and went, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that when you're on here, we have sentences like, not because I want to kill Scottish people. <laughs> Imagine, mate, I reckon 100% of the population of Scotland, including women and children, would absolutely batter me. So what? Yeah, good luck with that one. I'm not going to start a fight with them lot. But anyway, we were talking about that like, Cantonar quote, Cantonar. weren't we? Um, so Cantonar basically, he, he said it in more eloquent ways than this, but he basically said the way the world's going uh, we're going to make everyone immortal. No one's going to die from diseases or anything anymore. So therefore, it's only going to be accidents and war that kill us, uh, and that's going to be bad for humanity. Thoughts? <laughs> Thanks for the award. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, no, then he actually signed it off, Biff. I love football. Thank you. <laughs> Just Just Eric, and I love the fact that you know any other footballer or ex-footballer on the planet picks up a... Let's face facts, a relatively meaningless award. I know we all love Eric, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to be that bothered it? about it. Um, picks up that sort of award. No one would remember a word of what they say. No one would comment on it. No one would be bothered. No one would be in search Googling Shakespeare to find out what it actually came from, where it came from, sorry. But with Eric, he's just that enigmatic guy who's that, well read, it? who's always got something philosophical to say that says these things and we all d dissect it and it's that's just what makes him just who he a is one, and a, one of a kind yeah. and such a an absolute legend we love cancer now yeah i'm still bitter about the fact that we interviewed him on this channel and it was house and adam that do you know how many people say that to me about we've been on this channel <laughs> Say what? Guys should have interviewed Cantona. Yeah, that. Yeah. That's what said, yeah. They? Imagine well, everyone that. Says that, that, like, that would be oh fucking mad. Did you get your words out, though? I'd be like, uh, uh, yeah. I love you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I remember I met Beckham once. Um, I, I didn't interview him. Someone else was interviewing him. 
Um, but I was in the room and then I really wanted a fucking picture with him or a chat or anything. And I was so nervous. Were you at the like press shaking. conference? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my God. Well, you put another, in it as well. Another, you I fucking put dominant. Dominant. Yeah, didn't I? Again. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah again. Again. the press conference, right? It's the only time I've been in a press conference with him. And Be- David Beckham's there. And what was it? He, he starts slagging off this this it's called article. Stakes, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know. It might have been. I don't know who it was. I think I thought it was Ogden. I don't know. Oh, it might have been. Yeah, no, I don't know. So, I wouldn't have slagged off no, Ogden, would no, I? I don't know. It's just an article. You say, did you see that fucking shit article? Rrr, rrr. <laughs> that guy that wrote like such a dickhead. And I went, he sat next to you. <laughs> <laughs> and he was dead loud as well. And it was like before the press conference started, everyone's like just quiet. And he's just coming like his fucking teenager. He's having a drink. <laughs> like. <laughs> Half of that is right. <laughs> <laughs> it is tracking. Like. <laughs> 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 you just imagine oh, you picture what God. a BBC <laughs> office is, and imagine I walk in there every day dressed like this. Um, <laughs> I, I was sat right in the press conference, scared that he was going to ask a question. I wasn't even with him. Me, me. I was just with my job, and I was getting <laughs> David, David. <laughs> don't, don't, don't you hate scousers? <laughs> <laughs> what do you smell like? <laughs> Can I sniff you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. the thing is, right after it, we were, when he was in a room getting interviewed, I was just there waiting, like dead nervous, wanted a picture, wanted a chat, and then I was thinking, oh, I'm not going to get opportunity here, am I? And then genuinely, he stood up at the end, and he went, "Anyone want a picture?" And I was like, oh, there was like a room full of like, what, 25 people? It would have took him ages. He could have easily just walked out and got on with his day. But yeah, we all just got a picture with Beckham. I had I'd, a chat. I'd I'd left a, by that time. Don't have a fucking clue what we spoke about, but I definitely had a chat to him about something. That's mental. It might have just been like United that weekend or something. Were you too pissed to remember? I, was, no, I wasn't. Yeah. No. <laughs> He's trying to open a tin and off him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I must confirm, I wasn't pissed, but I was 19. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, that was me fucking putting my foot in my mouth. When, when was the last time you put your foot in your mouth, Carl? Can every day with my missus. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know. One of the ones, mate. What about you, Jay? When was the last controversy you were in? <laughs> Go on, what was the last bit? You must have had a big controversy when you were on radio. Um, <laughs> no. That you can talk about? Is there anything you can talk about? Come on, you can. Um, Q103 don't exist anymore. I've upset a few people. I upset Mark Lawrence once. Did you? He said, wouldn't you like to have Jürgen Klopp as your manager? I said, not a fucking chance. And he was like, United fan, are you? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not upset anyone, though? Um, I can't remember. Mate. I, I, probably. Probably. I'm, I didn't... <laughs> No, I can't even say it, man. It's bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell me that one off there. No. I nearly killed Johnny Marlon. No, there was, a, there was a guy once. I interviewed this guy, and um, he was in a wheelchair, right? And I know this is bad. Oh, God. And he'd, he was telling me this story, right? Right, last, chance, happened, last he'd, chance to get out of this. He'd come out. He'd been on a train, and what they'd done is someone had took him off the train, and they'd let him, like, the assistant or the train conducts or whatever, and they'd let him go at the top of the ramp, and he'd flown down the ramp. <gasps> And hit the barriers at the bottom. Oh, of shit! Right, so I was, he was from Manchester, so it was like local radio, so I went around to interview him. And he's telling me his story and he's describing it, but as he's describing it, like, you know, you can feel his style start giggling. Down. So, like, <laughs> I was like biting my lip and everything. And then after it, like, after he finished talking, there's like a minute gap before I asked him a question because I was just like trying my hardest not to laugh. And like everyone at work was, when they learned it, was like taking a piss out of me because this poor guy is telling me, like, how he got released from his wheelchair and he really went into the train tracks. And I was just like, I, I, <laughs> oh, did you? I, mate, I've got that though, you know. I I, I can't tell people. He was all right, by the way. He didn't die. Or yeah, he's all right. Yeah, I mean, he's not. still in a wheelchair, but he's all right. Yeah. But I, I, um, I couldn't. I can't reveal bad news to people. I laugh. It's a thing. <laughs> nervous it's a, smile. It's a nervous thing. smile yeah, laugh yeah. thing. Whenever when I'm revealing something to someone, they, something they don't know. If I was a boss, I'd be terrible. I'd be sacking people and fucking laughing in the face. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm sorry, you're out of a job. You can't pay your mortgage this week. Sit <laughs> 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 yourself off you go. Honestly, it's bad. It's bad. Um, have we missed anything this week? Yeah, when, when, anything when, else? We need to talk when, about. when was the last time you made someone cry, Peaky? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I don't really get involved in controversial things too often, to be honest, um, with you, lads. Like, apart low profile do- and all that. Yeah, apart from a dodgy fan cam. <laughs> Guys, moving on. <laughs> hey, um, we were going to do that, actually, today. I wanted to do that, because um, you guys can get involved as well in the comments below. Uh, we did this on radio, and it was quite fun. We did our fantasy Man United five-a-side, but... You've got to pick one player from each of the top five European footballing countries. So, French, English, German, Italian, Spanish. One nationality from each, and that's got to be the United five aside. So, I know what mine is, so I can start with mine. I went for Rooney as my English player. 
I went for Eric Cantona as my French player. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for my German player, there's only one choice. We all have the same one. It'll have to be Bastian Schweinsteiger. Only German to ever play for United, I believe. I think I'm right in yeah. saying that. Nothing so I've gone for Bastian Schweinsteiger there. And this is where it gets complicated because you'd think we don't, we've not had that many Spanish players actually over the years that have played for us. So you'd think it would be obvious I'd put De Gea in there. But we've got even less Italian players. So I'm going to put Mata in there with Massimo Taibi in goal. Oh Taibi? And that's going to be my United five side. But think about <laughs> it though, because if I had De Gea, then I'd have to put someone like Darmian who I can't. Well, I can now, but I can't, I, I, you know, I don't want to put Darmian in there. I'd rather yeah. Taibi than Damian. You think Taibi was better than Damian? As, as you know, I know they play in different yeah. positions, like, but... Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Mate, that Chelsea, remember that Chelsea game where he's gone to crouch down and got it and it's just popped no, straight it's through him? Or... Oh, well, was there, was the, there was the 5-0 the, the against Chelsea. Yeah. And then there was the, um, the Southampton 3-0. Yeah, but yeah. well, you got man of the match at Anfield. Yeah, you'll, 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 yeah. you'll find that out on a yes. video coming up on Full Time Devils. So, uh, go on, watch your five aside then. Oh, who's your English player? It's Rooney, isn't it? Rooney? Yeah. French? I don't want to say the same as you. It's got to be. It's either Cantor now or Schneiderlin. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Ever oh, a good shout. Yeah, there we go. Ever. Yeah. Okay. Ever for French player. What's the next one? Spanish. Herrera. Herrera. Italian. See, this is where it gets the problem. Matteo you've... Damian. No. Well, you, well, he was your, well, your German Schweinsteiger. Yeah. Well, which one of them are you playing in net? Uh, all of them. Exactly. Yeah. No, Rush goalie. <laughs> Rush, right, who's your Ru- right, okay, Rush goalie, fair yeah. enough. Rush goalie. I remember that. The newest one back. Yeah, yeah. First one back. I think it's got to be, yeah, Rooney, Rooney, English player Rooney. Rooney. Obviously, got to be King Eric, hasn't it? Yeah. I know you're trying to mix it up, but yeah. Um, Schweinsteiger. Same guys, you picked, you can't really do a lot else, can you, without fucking <laughs> like, putting Taibi in net? This is the problem. In net, or... This is the problem. You've got to put Taibi in net. Who are you, who are you having? Um, Ch- you can change up your. I've, I've skulls in there or something. Well, I'd pick Brian Robson. Oh, he's, right, fair he's, but I'm a little bit older than you guys. Fair but, um, Just Brian Robson's bit. the. Yeah, thank you. Um, he's the. Probably just about the best midfielder I've seen. Just shades it with Kino. Um, so I'll pick Brian Robson. Um, for my Spanish one, I know I'll get pelters for this, but. You know my thoughts on Ander Herrera. Mm, why so, would you get uh, pelters? You don't get pelters. Um, oh, yeah, so oh, producer Nick's just shouted PK. 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 Um, that's, yeah, that's, that's actually a decent shout, shout you know. Shout, mate. No one's picked a centre-back. No, that, that's a decent shout, yeah. Um, right, sorry. So what was I saying? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> fucking picking his team. Or, right. I might swap Matter out for PK after that shout. Okay, go on. So what, right, so... So you've gone for, you've gone for your English player. Right, Brian, Brian Robson's the English one. Right, are there any other Germans other than Schweinsteiger? No, just Schweinsteiger. <laughs> just Schweinsteiger. Just Schweinsteiger. You've got to go Schweinsteiger. Right. He's the captain of all our five sides. <laughs> First name on the team sheet. First name on it, literally. <laughs> yeah. And then I've got a, a, an, an Italian, a Frenchman, and a... Spanish. Spanish. Spaniard. So, for me... All right, then. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Okay. You said, you see the clock ticking. <laughs> right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go. Um, There's a different Italian player you could have. Yeah, you could have um, Makeda or you could have um, half American. Is, oh, Rossi. You could have Rossi. Um, I don't know. Do you know what? I would have. Yeah, stick Rossi in there. <laughs> Five side, side, side is different. Yeah, little nippy, little, 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 little yeah. He <laughs> banged him in for Villarreal, didn't he? So uh, <laughs> yeah, he did. yeah, I'll have Rossi um, in goal. What what nationalities have we got left you've now? You've got De Gea and Taibi. You've got Italy. Oh no, you've already done Italy. So you've, you've got to put you've got to fucking put De Gea in goal. No, I've not picked a Frenchman yet. Could I have Barca's gonna? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Fabio! Right. That changes <laughs> yeah. everything. Oh, oh, my that changes uh, everything. I mean, in the comment section, we're going wild, weren't they? <laughs> fucking what about Barca's? <laughs> yeah. That does change everything. Stick though. Fam- in his five aside, he was only shit coming off his line, which you ain't got to worry about. So you just stick him in front there. So yeah, that, right. So, Guys, so you, you threw us off this whole thing, yeah. saying there's only fucking Tahiti in there. Your game and is that, no. like, pissing the rules. Right, so <laughs> Barca's. Um, in that, obviously. Um, R- Rossi. Yeah, Bart is Rossi, Robson. Rob- Robson. So what have we got left? Schweinsteiger. Schweinsteiger. A Spaniard, Herrera. A, a Spaniard, Herrera. Yeah, that's it. I, I think I think your team's probably best, actually. <laughs> Fucking you, yeah. you knackered us not by saying the goalkeeper's options, guys. 
I ate Saibi that much. Think. I didn't pick him. Use your own brain. Think. <laughs> misled again. Also, See, Jay's, misled Jay's, again. Jay's, team there, Jay's <laughs> team there is total evidence that he thinks Bartes is a bigger United legend than King Eric. So uh, feel free to give him pelters in the comments so below. Shit. And oh, yeah. get your right. team in I'll as well. What, if if Fabian Bartes spoke Shakespeare, you'd be talking about him in the same, <laughs> same breath as you speak about it. Yeah. Right. Uh, are we done? I think we're done. Sorry, we're keeping you. We're done, aren't we? No, I'm just wondering, we're done, aren't we, for the podcast today? Wally of the Week. Wally of the Week, yeah. This is why I don't fucking present this. I don't know what we're doing. Wally of the Week, who is it? I am Madam McCollum. My Wally of the Week. It's not very original, but I'm going to go with Graham Sunas. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of a different one. I swear I had one on the way in before. My, my Wally of the Week's Peaky Pundit oh, for standing what? on that old man's foot. can't believe you <laughs> just stole my Wally of the Week. I was texting Jay this morning, like, can I pick Peaky? Oh, Peaky. Sorry, Peaky. Mate. Oh, sorry, We mate. saved the best till last, as always, though. Uh, mine is them fucking size 10s on your feet. <laughs> mine is Gaz, the Wally of the Week. You saw them trainers somewhere else. Grass before. Up. Fucking Grass self up, mate. Hey. As well. I need some new only trainers. Only one man wears them trainers. <laughs> Can't deny one that. Yeah, you can't deny it's you, that's all. Right, uh, who's yours, Carl? No, I was peaky because one, he's two hours late almost. <laughs> Oi, six hours it took me to get there. dedication, mate. <laughs> oh, it's dedication. Which car did you come in today? Is it with oh, the Ranger than this one, yeah? No, I sent the rental back. Fucking <laughs> 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 bell. Oh, my God. That is, that is some trick, that day, but Fuck, you got hey, called on it straight away. Favourite part <laughs> of the video. <laughs> <laughs> I told the boys it would get spotted. No, it would have none of it. Whose range was it? <laughs> no comment. Jay, explain it. <laughs> right, if you don't know, right, Peaky Pundit's channel, go watch it. He does like vlogs, he does like match day vlogs and everything. And at the beginning of his vlog, he rocks up in a Range Rover saying hello to the camera and all this. Yeah, you think, yeah, nice, man. Do you know what I mean? He's got a nice set of wheels <laughs> there. <laughs> Then someone pointed out in the comments, whilst you're driving to the game, you're not in a Range Rover, are you thinking? You know what happened? What happened was, <laughs> what, car, no, what, car, are you, what no. car are you in? I was in a Nissan Juke, but the, the method, this wrong is with that. behind the madness, this is what it was. So we shot the intro for the vlog the day before in the Range Rover, which right. isn't a rental I do own. And then in the morning, <laughs> bollocks, in the, in the morning, uh, got, any, got any proof, mate? Yeah, you drive it. Out, so. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Right. He's part of the morning. Oh, he has his in the morning. In the morning, I was in a rush and I had my little one's car seat in the Range Rover and I couldn't be asked to switch it over. The missus was kicking off and it was mayhem. So I was like, I'll just take the Nissan fucking Duke to Southampton. <laughs> so I did. Hey. And so, uh, yeah. You guys at home decide whether you believe <sighs> that story or not. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a poll. <laughs> 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 Right, guys, that has been the Full Time Devils podcast number 24. Yes, it I is number so. 24. And thanks as well. Like, you know, we've been obviously on audio booming on iTunes, and people have been leaving us reviews and ratings on iTunes, which we appreciate. Um, and also on, what else are we on? Spotify as well. Spotify, everywhere. SoundCloud, yeah. Wherever you usually get your podcast, no doubt we're there. Yeah. So, uh, um, back to normal next week, Macola. Uh, <laughs> back to normal, I don't know about that, but yeah, <laughs> Macola's there. We'll see, we'll see if he turns up, but yeah, uh, we'll see you next time. I think I introduced, out introduced, did that to thing, everyone, did I? Brilliant, okay, yeah. in a bit, laters. Yeah.